and a good morning and welcome back to the Netball Show. Just finishing off last week's games, uh, Winchell C 51 defeated Corio 33. Flick, um, not a bad win by the girls down there. No. You must be happy with that? Yeah, it was a good game actually. So it got, um, I know every quarter we were twice the amount that they were, but it was still a nice game to play, so okay. not bad. And good weather for it this weekend. Very, it was very mm. nice last week. Um, Thompson 64 defeated Belmont 38. Probably no great surprises there. Thompson, you know, still building on their percentage uh, uh, towards the end of the year there. Mm. Um, and the last game of the round, Anarchy uh, played Geelong West uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, Anarchy came away with a 49 to 19 win. So nice win for there for Anarchy, and um, yeah, they'll be happy with that. Mm. Be happy with that. Um, looking at today's games, uh, we're now into round 12. Um, First game, Winchelsea versus Geelong West at Winch. Mm. So uh, should we have any problems there, you wouldn't think, Flick? No. All the girls turning up today? Yes, um, we've actually got um, hopefully the Minister for Sport and the Mayor and a few other big knobs coming along. We've got the openings of the cl- of the new courts this week. So um, all the girls out at Winch are quite pumped about that as well. So It's the official opening? The official opening, yeah. Do you need me to come along and cut a ribbon? or Definitely not. You sure? <laughs> Damn it. All right. Um... Next, we've got uh, Werribee Central's at home uh, hosting East Geelong. Christy, um, any game thing you want to let us know what's going on there or just, just going to come out and... I can't give away our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it should be a good game, hopefully. We, we are, we're now looking forward to the second half of the season, so we've still got things we want to improve on, but we'll just continue chipping away at those and hopefully, yeah, come away with a nice strong wind. Good, good, good. Um, next game, Thompson at home, uh, hosting Anarchy, and um, I really can't see Anarchy doing any damage there to Thompson. I think um, they've got all their players, and they actually had a girl playing uh, last week, Renee, as a party. As a party, she's a goaler, shot most of the goals last week, I haven't um, seen her or heard from her, so uh, we might have to investigate that a little bit further and see who this girl is. Um, they had, all, had actually four goals last week, um, Rebecca White. Uh, Michelle Bradley and Nicole Trainer, they all gold. Um, but this uh, Renee, as a party, shot 30 odd goals, so might have another ring in there from Thompson. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Mm. Um, North Geelong host Inverley uh, down there at North, so yeah, look, I don't know. Inverley have been playing pretty good lately. Um, I don't know, Flick, what do you think? Um, oh, it's going to be a hard one. I think it could be quite close. It depends. North really depends on how they're playing on the day. Mm. Um, yeah. um, it also depends on the umpiring and how much control they've got over the game. So um, I'd pick North, but not by very much. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so too. Um, with the uh, the young girl, Kelsey White, last week, 14-year-old playing for Inverley for the first time. Mm. She had a great great game last week. But I think, uh, yeah, probably North, probably a bit too strong through that centre court there. Yeah. There's some girls there that have been around for a while. With the experience, yeah. With the experience. Mm. Um the next game, uh, second last game of the day, Bannockburn v Corio at Bannockburn. Um, I think after last week's loss against you guys, uh, Corio might come out and um, be too strong for Bannockburn. Yep. Yeah, they'll be out for a win for sure. Yeah. Um, also noticed last week in Corio, um, Danielle Davis shooting there, um, and uh, Danielle's first year. At, um, out of under-17s this year, mm. and don't sort of see much or hear much of her, but uh, for some reason, Michelle Rosakis didn't play last week. Um, she's not on the, the goal scorers at all, so she had a week off, whether it was through injury or what, I'm not sure, but, mm. um, yeah. At one stage, Crow did play um, three of their under-17 players um, like, at the same time, so um, they're definitely promoting their younger girls, but they are really good players, and it shows in the under-17 side. Um, that they are playing really good A-grade netball too. So um, I think that um, they will be a strong side in the next coming years when those 17 girls are picking up a bit more. Yeah, I agree. The last game of the day, Belmont uh, hosting Belpost Hill out at Belmont. Um, Flick, I think after Belpost Hill's demolition job that was done on them by Werribee last week, they'll be out for a bit of revenge today. Yeah, I think uh, Terry will be looking at... Um, be looking for them to keep their position in the top three, top four. I think they're only, what, two points ahead of 
of Winchelsea now. So, exactly, half game. Um, so they will be looking to maintain that position there, so definitely looking for a win. I think also, um, as Christy said before, um, the, a lot of the centre court players, young girls, a lot of silly errors in the centre court mm. and giving away free passes um, and, and a little bit of a lack of control there um, with Valpost Hill. Um, so that's something I'm sure that um, Terry's worked on at training during the week. And, um, you know, it's the first time he's seen where we play all year and now he's got a, a rough idea of what's going on. Mm. Um, I have to say one thing, Werribee's um, centre court press was one hell of a press. Very hard to go through, very hard. And the girls execute that perfectly. Mm. Um, you do a bit of training on that, Christy, at, at training, um, do you? Yeah, we have. But surprisingly on the weekend, the girls that we had doing it were the girls that probably don't do it as strong as they have in the past. So I was very happy with the way... Um, we, we put it on and usually, uh, you know, you, you give it a go a few times and most people can get through it. But, yeah, it got stronger and stronger as the game went on, definitely. Okay. And, Flick, you mentioned something before about the team of the year or something. You want yeah. to mention? Uh, just on an admin point of view there, um, coaches need to be keeping a good eye on team of the year players So um, because it will be coming up to picking time for that. So, um, yeah, just as, as a reminder there for them. And what all, all, all teams have to submit team of the year? Yeah, so each coach submits. They can be their own players or other players from other sides um, who they believe should be in the team of the year. And also um, coach of the year gets picked by the coaches as well. So um, it's then presented at the at the GDFL Awards at the end of the year. Okay. That's uh, interesting. Team of the year. Yes. Maybe, let's say, one person out of Bannock, Burn and maybe Knife and Werribee. <laughs> <laughs> See how we go. See how we go. Um what about the under seventeens? Um, who are you playing? Who are you playing this week? Um, East. East Geelong. East. Uh, Geelong East actually don't have the under seventeen side. You're exactly right. They don't yeah. either. They yeah. don't either. So we have a week off, but we're not slowing down. We still got training, and under fifteens have a game. Yep. Um, so they should be strong. Okay. Well, look, um, Christy and Susan, I do uh, thank you for coming in this morning. Uh, it's That's great right. to have thank you along. You for having us. Um, we try and get you know as many people along as we can, and uh, maybe one day we might even get Sonia Harris on the show. <laughs> maybe one day we might. Um, Uncle uh, Dick will be along in the minute with the boys from the footy show. Flick, thank you. We'll see you next week, and good luck today.